Hello, and thank you for exploring Lakehead International's videos. My name is Jordan, and I am the International New and Social Media Officer. I'm also the host of the Lakehead International Live Series, a fun and informative way for you to connect with current international students, professors, and ask questions about admissions and everything Lakehead. You are about to watch a recording from one of our previous live sessions. If any questions arise throughout the video, please do not hesitate to comment below. If you would like to check out some of our upcoming live sessions, please head over to our website at lakeheadu.ca forward slash international dash live. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to another Lakehead International Live. My name is Jordan, I'll be your host today. I'm joined by Patrick Carr, one of our international recruitment officers who's gonna help me co-host today's session. We have quite a bit to talk about and lots to dive into. Hopefully you have lots of questions and uh, hopefully there's lots to learn from today's session. Um, speaking about today's session, we're going to be chatting about getting involved in student life here at Lakehead University. So we'll cover plenty of topics. On that note, though, before we actually dive into those topics and dive into today's session, I'll introduce myself. For those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Jordan Ball. I am the International New and Social Media Officer. I help run our live events, our digital experiences, social media channels, as well as our Global Ambassador Program here at Lakehead University, which we'll definitely talk about during today's session. I'll pass it over to Patrick to introduce himself and then we'll get started. Hi Jordan, good morning everyone. My name is Patrick Carr. I am one of the many international recruitment officers here at Lakehead University. I usually work with students based in the Middle East or Africa as well as the Caribbean. However, I'm happy to be here to talk today, but talk to everyone today about student life at Lakehead and answer any questions uh, that any of our potential students might have. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us, Patrick. Uh, before we get started, I'll chat about what we're going to cover today and what our agenda looks like. We're going to go over upcoming events. So within the Lakehead Internationalized series, we have plenty of events still coming up in the coming weeks and months. So there's plenty to get involved and get excited about. We're going to chat about our hometowns to kick things off, and then we'll chat about student clubs and leadership opportunities, including the Global Ambassador Program. We'll chat about International Center as well as Athletics and Recreation. And then at the end of today's webinar, we do have a question and answer period. So I encourage you, if you do have questions, for either Patrick or myself today, you can always ask those throughout the session using Zoom's Q&A function. We'll be happy to answer those behind the scenes in some cases, but also answer them live whenever we can. If you're watching this as a recording, you can always ask that uh, on the video and comment below. And so I will chat first about some of our upcoming events. In our Academics Explored series this week uh, on Wednesday, April 14th at 9 a.m., we will be hosting a webinar with nursing. So it's an in-depth with nursing. We're really excited to have them. And we're gonna have a few faculty members and staff members from their School of Nursing join us to chat all about the program and what you can anticipate as a nursing student. Following that, we're gonna have an in-depth with psychology. So we'll have a few faculty members and staff members from the psychology department, and they'll be joining us to chat all about the program structure, uh, unique learning opportunities, what first year looks like at an undergraduate and graduate level, and so much more. That's gonna be next week, Wednesday, April 21st at 9 a.m. And last but not least, at the end of this month, we're gonna be doing a session with research at Lakehead, and that's Wednesday, April 28th at 9 a.m., where we're gonna actually sit down with, with a few of our students, just a few of them, uh, that have been involved in research in the last few years. Uh, there's plenty of students that have been involved in, unfortunately I can't put them all in one, uh, one nice session, but we'll definitely uh, have a good variety at the Research at Lakehead session on Wednesday the 28th. You can also register for some of our other Lakehead Explored sessions that are upcoming, including Residence and Dining, which is next week, Monday, April 19th. And then you can also register up, uh, for another upcoming session, which is Student Supports on Monday, April 26th. Those are just the next two sessions. There's a few other ones that you should look forward to, and one includes applying for your student visa, meeting your future international advisors, and my journey to Lakehead student panel. So those are just a few of the sessions that are still coming. Uh, we actually have a few more after that, and then we'll be wrapping up uh, for our series at the end of May with a transition to our International Student Services team, which is going to help you prepare for your travel to Canada. So uh, essentially registering for classes, preparing for your travel, 
what to pack, what not to pack, securing housing, all that sort of stuff will be once again covered in June and July this year. Uh, but for now, I hope that you do attend some of our upcoming sessions, especially residents and dining. If you currently hold an offer to Lakehead University and you're looking to secure that housing or accommodations piece, uh, you'll certainly want to learn about our on-campus residence options. So things to remember, some of our housekeeping notes for today's session, if you like what you see, don't worry. We are recording today's session. We'll send out a link afterwards on our weekly invite email. It's always at the bottom and it also goes up on our YouTube channel. So you can head over to Lakehead University's main YouTube channel and find the playlist Lakehead International Lives for all of our live webinar recordings. Like I mentioned, if you do have any questions throughout today's session, you can always let us know using the Zoom Q&A chat. Uh, the Zoom Q&A chat will help us keep everything organized and in order and hopefully answer everyone in a timely manner. If you're watching this as a recording, you can certainly still ask those same questions. You all, all you need to do is comment on the video wherever it's posted. And last but not least, I want to remind you to follow us on social media for updates about future webinars and you also will get an insider sneak peek into Lakehead University. I do my best to provide a well-rounded experience as well as uh, announce important updates for the university for our followers. So if you head over to either Facebook or Instagram, you can find us at Lakehead International on there. And with that being said, uh, I'll pass it over to Patrick, who's going to kick things off with an introduction to our hometowns, and he'll kick things off for Thunder Bay, and I will kick things off for really a shortly after. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. So yeah, as we were mentioning, Lakehead does have two hometowns. Um, one is the city of Thunder Bay. The city of Thunder Bay is located in the province of Ontario. It's a roughly uh, 100,000 people, just over 100,000 people, and it is um, the it is a medium-sized Canadian city, uh, based off of uh, you know kind of city sizes here in uh, in Canada. Located in northwestern Ontario, Thunder Bay acts as a hub for uh, a wide a large region here, and it has a lot of amenities that uh, students would love. Uh, publicly funded transit system that students get a bus pass for with their student fees at Lakehead University, a number of restaurants, coffee shops, um, as well as movie theaters and shopping malls, uh, great recreational facilities across the city, which we're gonna highlight as we go through here. So this is the uh, great aerial shot of the Thunder Bay waterfront. Uh, the waterfront area is, is newly renovated, I would say, in the last uh, five or six years. Um, they've done lots of improvements, the city has, to this area. It, it has a great outdoor uh, space for concerts and events, as well as a number of restaurants and some stores at the waterfront. It's a spot where a lot of our students uh, choose to spend some time because it's a beautiful area that is has a lot going on. And you can do things like you can learn how to sail uh, with some of the various sailing companies that operate out of the waterfront as well. So really a great place to spend some time in the summertime and or the wintertime, because in the wintertime, there is an ice skating rink down here uh, at the waterfront as well. And on that note, Patrick, I know you mentioned that you can go to concerts and festivals down here. If, if our audience actually looks just to the right of their screen, I'll use my mouse. I hope folks can see my mouse over here. You'll see somewhat of a yellow and white tent, and that's actually where our events are hosted. So we'll have concerts down there. We'll have something called movies in the park. So in the summer, we actually host uh, big screen type movies and there's plenty of vendors that set up it's really a, a great atmosphere down here at the waterfront especially for students that are looking for exciting things to do after you know a long day of classes they can head down here to unwind and and relax or potentially they can hype things up and they can get excited about all the things to do in thunder bay on that note i'll, I'll let you chat about downtown port arthur which is also in that photo just up from the waterfront. Yeah, I was going to say connected to the waterfront there, just on the other side of the uh, of the, the main road, which has a, a pedestrian walkway over top of it, you'll find downtown Port Arthur. Now, downtown Port Arthur is uh, one of the two kind of downtown core areas uh, that are uh, in the city of Thunder Bay, and it's the one that's closer to the university. So a lot of our students do spend uh, time in downtown Port Arthur, downtown PA, as we call it. Downtown Port Arthur, um, 
combines a number of great restaurants, uh, some amazing pubs, and a, a number of local shops with more opening up every day. There's always something going on in downtown Port Arthur, um, and it's a quick 15 to 20 minute bus ride from the university. Um, so it's a, a great area. It's also walkable and it's close to the uh, Lakehead University Law School as well. Um, it's, a, it's, it's really one of the best areas in town to catch a concert, to go for dinner with some friends, to go to a coffee shop and, and maybe study off campus. Um, and it's home of uh, my favorite restaurant in town, um, Thai Kitchen. So uh, it's definitely a, a place that a lot of our students spend some time in. For sure, yeah, and I absolutely agree. I think Thai Kitchen is one of the best restaurants in Thunder Bay. Yeah, I love it. But on the note of just studying down there or shopping down there even, I mean, since we've been remotely, it's been great to be able to actually get out of the home office and maybe head downtown yeah. to a coffee shop and work for a few hours. There's a really unique atmosphere in the Thunder Bay's downtown, I think, and it's uh, both small town uh small town vibes with your community there and just walking into a shop and having the shop owners or the store employees be so friendly but at the same time still having access to so many different varieties of shops so whether it's you're going for clothing whether it's um, coffee food related uh, personal care related there's really a variety down there they're all locally owned so it really gives you that Canadian-esque vibe and also a Thunder Bay support local sort of thing yeah so on that note uh, I know another major factor about studying at Lakehead University is our access to nature um, so this is just one feature in Thunder Bay and I'll let Patrick dive into it and then of course we can talk about the abundance upon Boulevard Lake yeah, so Boulevard Lake is one of the many parks in the city. Thunder Bay is truly blessed. You can kind of actually tell here uh, from this aerial shot the amount of green space we have in our city. Boulevard Lake is a recreation area that uh, starts off with a five kilometer uh, bike path and walking path around the lake itself. Um, but that's not all that's offered here uh, at the lake. You can rent uh, canoes, kayaks, and stand up paddle boards and get on the water. There's a swimming area, there's tennis and volleyball courts available, a mini golf course, a mini putt golf course if that's something you're interested in, and uh, frisbee golf uh, kind of on the other side of the lake. So uh, a number of outdoor recreation opportunities uh, available all in one spot. It's a very popular place in the city on a nice summer day. You'll see uh, many people uh, out and about on the trails around Boulevard Lake, walking and, and just hanging out. It's a great spot to go with friends or go yourself for some exercise. But in the bigger picture, Jordan, I think uh, Boulevard Lake really is a great example of how Thunder Bay has a number of great outdoor recreation opportunities for our students to participate in. Um, and it's one of the best things about Thunder Bay, I think, is that you're no more than you know, 20 minutes away from a park or a, a set of hiking trails or a ski hill or uh, ice skating, any of these amazing sailing uh, opportunities. And that's really a great thing about living in this city. For sure, yeah. I mean, I can go on an endless rant essentially about all the recreational opportunities that we have within our city, which I mean, also to note there is, of course, many other cities will have recreational opportunities, but the beauty about Aurelia and Thunder Bay um, is the, our access and ease of access. So the fact that you can leave campus and within 10 minutes be downtown or within 15 minutes be at Boulevard Lake, within another 15 minutes, you could be out to our local ski area. So it really shows you that the access to all these amenities is not uh, an extended travel. You're not going on a weekend getaway to get out. You, you literally are leaving campus and maybe having to hop on public transit or hop into a car for a few moments and you'll be able to access this great place to both unwind and also get a little bit of exercise. So with that being said, I'll chat a bit about the city of Aurelia. So Aurelia is located in central Ontario. It's home to one of our campuses and central Ontario or Aurelia, pardon me, is 
is roughly 30,000 students, or 30,000 people, pardon me, not students, um, 30,000 people live in Aurelia. It's located 90 minutes north of Toronto and about 30 minutes northwest of Barrie. And so our access to both big city amenities while having that small town um, culture is really important here in Aurelia. So our students really benefit from the fact that you can still access those big city amenities while still living in a small town. And so with that being said, I'll chat a bit about the waterfront. So uh, I'm sure many of our viewers or audience members are considering there's a theme here and our waterfronts and our connection to both water and, and lakes in Thunder Bay and Aurelia is really important to us. They share a lot about our history, but also a lot about our culture and our upbringing for our residents. And so in Aurelia, if you're looking to un unwind after a long day of studies or maybe a long day of work in the summer, and you want to come over to the waterfront, there's plenty to do down here. Similar to Thunder Bay, there's sailing opportunities. You can go swimming in the water. Uh, there's public beaches down here. There's also a concert venue down here as well, an outdoor concert venue. So very similar to Thunder Bay in that we love having our festivals outside and there's plenty to do outside of the waterfront. Located just above the waterfront here is Aurelia's downtown. So very similar to Thunder Bay again, is the fact that there's plenty of opportunity down here. Whether you're interested in doing a bit of shopping, a little bit of crafting, maybe you're looking to grab a bite to eat or go out for a drink with a friend, there's plenty of things to do in, down here and plenty of options also. So there's tons of restaurants. One of my favorite is Apple Annie's. It was actually featured in that very first photo of the city of Aurelia. Um, Apple Annie's is a, is a great shop for both bakery and pastries and sweets but they also have a great dinner and lunch menu um, and, and lots of seating as well and on top of that so right now in this photo you can see this is a local street fair and so vendors from all around Aurelia and Simcoe County will actually come here set up their booths and sell their local merchandise to people walking around on the street so they'll close down the entire street and it's a really great opportunity to both be exposed to Canadian culture, Indigenous culture, and also just have a lots of opportunity to interact with your fellow citizens of Aurelia. With that being said, similar to Thunder Bay, again, that connection to nature is so important. And so this photo represents Scout Valley, which is located just down the road from Lakehead University, about a five to 10 minute walk from campus. Um, and our students often go here again to unwind after maybe a, an academically strenuous day or maybe a long day of work they're looking to come here and unwind. But uniquely enough is this area is also used for many of our programs and academic research. So our students and our professors will, will go out in a lab or a classroom to Scout Valley and they'll do different testing. So whether uh, it's our environmental sustainability team who's gonna go out here and do some testings of the local biology, or whether it's our biology team or even our applied life sciences team that are going out here and looking at some of the microorganisms that live in the waterways or live in the ground and surrounding area. So it provides both an academic opportunity, but also simply a, a, a student life opportunity to get involved, to stay connected to nature, to unwind, all that sort of stuff. On that note, uh, chatting about student life, another important factor is student clubs and leadership. I know Patrick is going to chat a bit about these opportunities, and then I'll go into depth about a few of them. Yeah, so at Lakehead University, um, there's lots of opportunities to get involved, and we're going to highlight some of those right now. Um, for starters, we have over 50 student-run clubs that cover a wide variety of academics, culture, uh, sports and movies and a variety of interests really. Um, these clubs are run by students for other students. So the, the awesome thing about that is that if for whatever reason there isn't a club uh, that you're interested in and you have an idea to start a club, you can actually um, get 10 of your friends and start a club and receive funding for your club's activities from the, the university student union. So it's a really great opportunity. 
Additionally, um, outside of kind of the recreational clubs, if you're more into service and community service and volunteering, there are also opportunities for, for that at Lakehead. Um, between our Global Ambassador Program, which Jordan is uh, the, the head of, the staff liaison for, um, which we can chat about, but also the Peer Mentor Program, our Excel Leadership Program, are just a few of the opportunities to really give back to the community, as well as work on your leadership uh, skills prior to graduation at Lakehead University. Jordan, I know you want to share a couple of the, uh, the more popular clubs on campus. For sure, yeah. And so I actually have a list in front of me. So I'll read off of that list just to give you a well-rounded view of all the different clubs or, or some of the clubs, like Patrick was mentioning, and having these clubs based on a different variety or different category, whether it's academics or culture, or sports, movie, etc. There's a lot of different um, opportunities for you to get connected with similar like-minded people. So that includes the African Caribbean Student Association, Lakehead University Badminton Club, Lakehead Iranian Cultural Association, Korean Student Association of Lakehead University, Lakehead Engineers Without Borders, Lakehead Martial Arts, Lakehead University Anime and Magna, Lakehead University Indian Student Association, Muslim Student Association, Chinese Students and Scholars Association, Southeast Asia Society. So those are just a few to name. And, and like the slide says, there's over 50 clubs on campus that you can get involved in. And if there's not a club for you, you can certainly start one with you yourself and your friends. And so those are just a few things to um, to speak on. I have a few features right here on in the slides built in actually and uh, I want to show you a few photos just to give you a taste of those clubs and what they do. This photo is actually from the Engineering Bus Bowl. So the Engineering Student Society, short form or acronym is ESS, has all of our engineering students come together and they run different events, they support different services, and they have different supports within their group itself. This is a fundraising event where uh, teams of engineers will actually attempt to pull a school bus. And so for those who aren't familiar with a typical North American yellow school bus, it is a massive vehicle. It has about 50 seats for kids. And so being able to pull this is no small task for sure, but our engineers pull it off each year as a fundraising opportunity for both their club, but also a local charity within our community. So that's one way to get involved. Um, other academic focused clubs include uh, clubs for business program. Uh, there's Lubsa, there's Boss in Aurelia. There's also for our nursing program, Luna. Those are just a few that are coming right to mind. Um, a vast majority of our programs actually have a dedicated student society or club built into them. And if it's not necessarily your program, it might be your broader faculty that has a club to get involved in, where you'll have an opportunity to both uh, connect with like-minded people within your degree, connect with people outside of your degree, and also potentially run for an executive position to gain experience and build that resume and CV. Another opportunity that I wanted to share was Lusu Culture Days. And so I'm sure you may have seen the photo that was behind our original slide about student leadership in clubs, but this is an in-depth photo and this is actually um, a, a culture day on campus where different cultures in different countries have representatives. So whether it's students, staff, faculty, community members come together, gather together, share it with the broader community, but also feed us politely. And so here you'll see some Pakistani students sharing their traditional food as well as their culture. So you see photos on the right of uh, within Pakistan. They are happy. I remember being here while this photo was taken. They were happy to let me try the food, of course, which I was super grateful for. It was amazing, but also learning a bit more about their culture and, and really diversifying my own experiences and my own understandings. Um, this is one of many. We had about 30 or 40 booths set up in this uh, photo, although you can't see them all. Uh, it was really great to see that uh, collaboration of cultures come together and that multicultural atmosphere where students and their own uh, unique cultures were being celebrated uh, collectively. So on that note about student leadership, Patrick, I really liked your mention of how this is a great opportunity to build both soft skills as well as 
uh, like true skills to help you in your journey to eventually, you know, get to that next level of study. So whether you're applying to an undergrad program with intentions, maybe to go to med school or law school, or potentially you're looking to move right into the career field, that's exactly what I did. And I, I know many students are looking to do that as well. Gaining skills, adding to your resume, adding to your CV is always important within your university career. But on top, on top of that, I like to speak about the fact that this opportunity, the Global Ambassador Program, is to connect with students that are, are looking to make friends with a culturally diverse group, but also help the university in our efforts to make an impact within our local communities and international and global communities. So I'm very proud to run the Global Ambassador Program. We have over 30 students a part of the program. Um, and this is actually a photo from one of our training retreats. So each student got their own t-shirt. They get to design their t-shirt and their name on the very front. And they get to proudly wear these t-shirts at our events where we go out into the community and either volunteer or we go into the community and assist. Um, but also hosting on-campus events. You'll see some of these shirts pop up and you can feel free to, of course, approach any one of these students and they'll be happy to assist you in that process. Hopefully when you join us in Thunder Bay or Aurelia, uh, you'll be able to join the Global Ambassador Program and learn more about our commitment to the community and, and bettering the university. So this is a quick uh, testimonial or quote uh, from Bright. Bright is a student from Nigeria studying in chemistry, and she is actually one of our global ambassadors as well. Uh, she also, on top of that, is a part of the AFCASA group, which is the African Caribbean Student Association. And so she shared with us in one of her interviews that having a little piece of home within Canada was really important to her. And so celebrating her culture within AFCASA brings her closer to home, essentially. AFCASA is a diverse group of students built from all the countries within Africa, as well as all the countries within the Caribbean that have shared experiences, but also bring their own unique backgrounds and uh, lived experiences to that group. And so she said that I know that there are other people like me and we can go through experiences together as a family. So she has that support system within AFCASA to you know, reach out to a friend who may have uh, gone through a similar experience as her, but also who may be in an upper year and can guide her in that experience. Now that Bright is a fourth year student, she, she is the one leading many students and then sharing her experience. One of her fondest memories actually from AFCASA to date has always been celebrating Black History Month. Um, and she said, but I also cannot forget the night we all went out as a group to see Black Panther and she says Wakanda forever, a great movie, of course, but it was a celebration for her and her friends within the group to go and see that movie at our local movie theater and of course share in that experience. And she said that clubs are a lovely way to meet people and share moments and experiences like I just said, um, and that in FCASA is never a dull one for sure. So with that being said, um, the next thing I want to ch chat about is the International Center. So the International Center is located on our Thunder Bay campus. We like to say it's the heart of campus or it's the hub of our international activity here on the Thunder Bay campus. And so this is the exterior of our International Center. This is where lots of students will gather, will host events out here, which you'll see in a few upcoming photos. Uh, but it's also the place where students uh, it can wait for their, their meetings with our staff members and advisors. And so this is a photo inside the International Student Lounge, actually. It's a great place to unwind, and whether it's between classes or maybe a class was uh, called off early, you can come here and relax, maybe grab a coffee or a tea, or you can sit down at one of the TVs, watch sports, you can watch video, get play video games, we have a foosball, foosball table, pardon me, on the bottom right corner. Not pictured, but definitely still uh, an exciting opportunity is a pinball machine as well. I know many students love that. And so this is a gathering place for international students where we can host events, where we can host meetings, but also students can come in and, and connect with other international students. So here's a photo from one of our uh, Loose or not loose, pardon me, one of our international culture days. This is actually uh, celebrating Africa and the many um, countries that reign from Africa 
And so we had our students have food, music, activities, games that they brought from their home country, and they celebrated in that, uh, in that tradition. Another photo we have is here inside the International Student Center, where we had a group from Mexico learning English in our English language center, and they actually offered Latin dancing to students. So uh, this group, of course, is doing a performance, but then after this, they were able to bring students in and show them some of their moves and show them some of the dances. So it's that shared experience and sharing culture, which was really important for them. And this is a photo actually inside the lounge again of um, the Chinese Scholars and Student Association, where we had traditional calligraphy lessons. And so uh, this, this student was actually showing how using uh, the ink to, and, and very special brush, brushes, it's a very complex process uh, to do some of these tra traditional characters and symbols and, and, and letters within uh, the Chinese Mandarin alphabet. And so with that being said, I will pass it over to Patrick, who's going to chat briefly about athletics and recreations. And then I'll take it over just for one second again in the middle here to chat about one of our newest facilities, uh, the Wolsten. Thanks, Jordan. So on top of clubs and, and getting involved in, in events and activities, we understand that athletics are a major part of many students' uh, lives here at Lakehead. And we're really happy to offer students an op a really great opportunity to stay healthy and uh, participate in whatever re athletics and recreation they want to do on campus. In Thunder Bay, uh, you have a full gymnasium available to you with an indoor 200 meter track, which is actually on your screen now, as well as a soccer pitch. Um, we have an Olympic sized swimming pool and uh, a, a, set, a new set of weight rooms, which Jordan is going to chat about in a moment. But um, in Aurelia, we, we have uh, similar facilities available with drop-in fitness classes, a full gymnasium, swimming pool, and indoor track uh, located at an off-campus off facility, but just the same access and same facilities. As a part of athletics and recreation, you can join uh, what we call campus rec. These are intramural leagues in a variety of sports such as badminton, volleyball, basketball, flag football. So there are all kinds of opportunities for you to join as an individual and meet some friends or get your friends together and put in a full team yourself uh, and, and just have some good opportunities uh, playing once or twice a week depending on, on the league. So um, for sure. Jordan, I'll pass it off to you. Uh, to chat awesome. About Thanks now. Patrick. Um, on, on that note, too, about your mention about uh, some of those sports teams, of course, your mention of recreational sports teams is a key one because many students love that aspect of the camaraderie around sports and, and also exploring new sports that maybe they had never considered before. We also have varsity teams. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, before we move on to that, though, I want to feature our new athletic facility. So on that note, we also have fitness facilities close to campus. So in Thunder Bay, it is located on campus and it's just a few minute walk from our residents and most of our academic buildings. A really, like Patrick mentioned, is an external building, but again, close to campus. So it's so convenient for you to use. So this photo is actually um, a rendering of the Wolf's Den. It is in its final stages of construction. So we have uh, a brand new building accessible to students. Hopefully this fall, when we're back in person, we'll be able to use this full facility, pardon me, to its full extent. I know some students were already able to use it earlier this year in January and February, and before that, uh, we were still in construction. So that's why this is still rendering. We haven't done photos exterior yet, but I do have some updated photos of the interior, which I actually think this is Patrick's first time seeing some of these. So uh, it's very exciting to have a new building open on any of our campuses, of course, uh, but one that's dedicated to students and, and their well being and their recreation and just getting involved is very important. So, here you actually see the breezeway into the new building and where students will have an, a, a place to lounge around, study, hang out, wait for their friends, whether they're going into a rec team game, whether they're going to do a workout and they're hanging out waiting for their friend to get off class or work, they can hang out in these beautiful loungers now. 
Um, there's also off of this same breezeway, there's going to be wellness rooms, studios that you can use, as well as more study spaces for students. This is a photo of the brand new uh, gym. And so this actually will be practice courts for many of our sports teams. Uh, our beautiful athletics logo has been um, painted onto the hardwood there in the middle. And there's plenty of lines, as you can see, to really accommodate all the different types of games that you can play. When you're looking at this photo, I want you to note in the background on that lower floor, there's a weight room and on the top floor uh, with all that glass, there's a, a cardio room. So I have photos in both. So on the lower level in that weight room, you see some of our brand new weights. Um, so there's, there's squat bars, there's rack bars, there's dumbbells. There's plenty of opportunity for you uh, to work out in this room. This is one of our newest rooms, of course, but we still have plenty of old facilities and not, I hate saying the word old, it's old because we have a new facility, um, but they're still usable. They've been used for many years now and, and they continue to update those facilities and equipment as well. If you just head upstairs, you'll actually get that nice view to the left here. Uh, although you can't see it, that glass looks over into the, the um, I'm losing my train of thought, my, the court here, the court that we were just looking at, but all of these cardio machines. So we have ellipticals, treadmills, rowers. Um, we also have the cycling machines, stair steppers. There's a lot of different cardio machines up here. And of course, with a great view, whether it's right in front of us, you're looking out into the outdoor fields for athletic facilities, or if you're looking into the courts and you're watching maybe a pickup game or even a practice happening. So that's the new Wolf's Den. Um, it was something I was really excited to share and something I'm looking forward to seeing in person when we're back on campus. Um, Patrick, you had done a nice segue into our recreational sports teams. Can I pass it back to you to chat a bit about our club and varsity teams and also the games and have students head out there? Yeah, for sure. So the, you know, as, as we mentioned, we do have intramural campus rec teams, but we also have what's called varsity sports. And varsity sports are the competitive sports where Lakehead University competes against other universities uh, across uh, Ontario and eventually Canada in what we call the U Sports League, the University Sports League. These, um, these teams, you can see shots of our basketball team, our ice hockey team, our track team. Um, so these are competitive sports. Um, if you are uh, an elite collegiate athlete or an aspiring elite collegiate athlete, you can connect with a coach on campus and see if they're, uh, they are accepting tryouts for that team. Um, or if you're a spectator of these sports, uh, many of the games are on campus and, and you can attend them and, and cheer on our, our, our student athletes. Um, so we've got a very competitive sports teams uh, on campus and we're really proud to support them. Um, you know, this, the, the entire city is often behind, uh, not just the university community, but the entire city is often behind our basketball teams and our ice hockey teams, um, which is great. For sure. And they, they certainly bring a large crowd, both from the, the campus community as well as the broader uh, cities that we live in and call home. And with that being said, I know even our residents team often uh, has full outings where they'll they'll get city buses or school buses, the big yellow school buses you saw on an earlier slide, to bring students and bus them all the way to our ice hockey facility, which is at the Fort William Gardens. Ice hockey, of course, is famous in Canada and famous around the world, but it's a sport that uh, many, many students and many local um, locals will play or learn as a child, at least. Um, and so when you come to Canada, of course, you want to pick up on some of our traditions and our experiences. And so I always recommend that students check out at least one hockey game to just see, see the atmosphere that's filled within that arena and also the camaraderie around cheering on your fellow student athletes, as Patrick mentioned. And on that note, I think it's time to open the floor to questions. I know that we've been receiving a number of them throughout today's session about various topics. And so, Patrick, I'll let you kick things off uh, since you had a few marked, and then I'll have a chance to review them on my end as well. 
For sure. So I just wanted to touch base on, on one of the major off-topic questions Jordan and I often receive during these, <laughs> these presentations, which is the, dis the discussion around admissions, admissions timelines. Um, and we know many students are eagerly awaiting uh, a decision on their application at both the undergraduate and graduate level. Uh, we don't have the time or necessarily ability to discuss those here today. At the undergraduate level, generally most decisions are made within 15 business days. And if it's been, uh, if you have any questions about that, you can always reach out to the undergraduate, undergraduate admissions teams uh, regarding the status of your file to make sure they have all the documents they need to make a decision. At the graduate level, I can't, we can't really give you a timeline for a decision. Decisions are made by the faculty uh, of the respective program you have applied to. And um, when they make a decision, it will be posted in your Lakehead University My Info account. Um, so do check that regularly to see if a decision has been made. You can always reach out to the Faculty of Graduate Studies at gstudent at lakeheadu.ca to um, to get an update on your situation. That awesome. being said, uh, Jordan- I was gonna I'm add on there, Patrick, is that I would recommend that students check out our YouTube channel, Lakehead University's YouTube channel, go to the playlist, Lakehead International Lives, and head over to the webinar about next steps in the admission process. Myself and um, one of our international recruiting officers, we actually outlined in detail exactly what your next steps are after submitting your application to Lakehead University. Like Patrick mentioned, um, times and processing times do vary depending on what program you've applied to, what level of study you've applied to. And so we do our best in that session actually to break it down and so that you'll get a better understanding of when you might be able to anticipate a, a decision from our admissions teams, but also what you should be doing to make sure that we have all of the information, whether it's checking your application status, checking your outstanding documents, submitting new documents as you receive them, connecting with one of our admissions teams, or even connecting with your graduate coordinator, graduate supervisor, to see what is next in the process. And with that being said, I hope that you do check that video out on our YouTube channel, um, but I'll let Patrick get back to the next question. Awesome. So we have a great question about the distance of Thunder Bay to Toronto. Um, and this is a question that comes up a lot, mostly because many students are not familiar with Canadian geography, and we don't expect you to be. Um, the first thing I'm going to preface this and say is Canada is very, very big. Uh, let's, it's one of the largest countries geographically by mass, and Ontario is actually one of the largest provinces by math or by geographical distance. So uh, that being said, uh, from the city of Toronto to the city of Thunder Bay, it is about 90 minutes by plane. It's a 90 minute flight. If you were to drive that, which most students uh, do not, um, it would be uh, between 13 and 15 hours, depending on uh, you know, a variety of factors. So we do recommend flying to Thunder Bay. For most international students, their flight path into Thunder Bay <coughs> means connecting in Toronto International Airport and then flying to Thunder Bay on one of three different airlines. Generally, this is Air Canada or WestJet as they connect with uh, you know, many major airlines in Toronto Pearson International Airport. But there is a smaller uh, US Canada continental airline called Porter Airlines that also does fly to Thunder Bay. So depending on where you're coming from, that is also an option. Um, there are there were uh, 20 flights a day nearly uh, between the various airlines at one point to and from Thunder Bay. So that it's, it's a very well connected city. Um, but yeah, you, you're you going to want to fly into the city of Thunder Bay. Um, Another question, uh, slightly off topic to our, our, our stuff today, but I just wanted, I thought it'd be good to answer, is about jobs on or off campus. So um, this student wants to know if they can apply for our jobs ahead of time prior to arriving to campus. And the answer to that is unfortunately you cannot. To work in Canada, you do have to have what's called a social insurance number, a SIN number, which you cannot get until you're physically in the country. Um, that being said, our International Student Services team can help you acquire that when you arrive on campus. Many students get jobs within the first month of being here, and we uh, have a whole team of people dedicated to, to helping you with that transition. 
For sure. Um, On that note, Patrick, I'll, I'll mention that yeah. we also have a dedicated international immigration advisor, Jennifer Hayes, her name, and she's actually one of the main people that coordinates those sessions. She helps students with work permits, study permits, co-op permits, all that sort of stuff. And so uh, when you do arrive here in Thunder Bay or Aurelia, um, you are certainly more than welcome to meet with her, but also keep an eye out for some of those sessions, specifically the social insurance uh, number clinic. We host those on a regular basis when students first join Thunder Bay or Aurelia. And so with that being said, you'll actually be able to get that number right off the bat. And then once you start your studies, you can start the applications and resume submissions to jobs. Um, one of my our previous questions were uh, whether or not students are able to find jobs when they get here. And so in our experience, if an international student would like a job while studying at Lakehead University, they can find a job quite easily. They might have to apply to a few different places, but there's almost always job opportunities available to students um, that offer also flexible work schedules. So of course, your number one priority when you're here at Lakehead is your academics. And then, of course, balance with that is your well-being. And so managing your school schedule, your work schedule, and your well-being is very important. So take that into consideration when you're planning. Um, Patrick, I'll pass it back to you. I know you have a few more questions. I'll jump into uh, and answer a few of the ones you've marked. So uh, yeah, great. a uh, couple of great questions, Jordan, about the fall, our upcoming semester here, uh, and um, the method of instruction and how is that going to be delivered? So Lakehead announced, um, I would say it's about a month ago now, uh, it came out that we will be uh, moving towards an, a fully in-person teaching model. This is obviously in accordance to guidance from um, both federal, provincial, and our local public health agency. Uh, so there's obviously you know, a lot that we don't know about the future. If it, the past year has taught us anything, it's that it's, it can be at times hard to predict the future. We are looking to be back in person and offering an in-person experience to our students. And we would encourage all of our applicants to keep an eye on their Lakehead email, because not only is that where most information will come to you uh, for, but it is where Jordan and our communications team will push the most pertinent information first, especially regarding things like the method of instruction. So uh, right now, the, the, the answer is we are looking to welcome students back on campus and in-person classes this fall, um, obviously subject to uh, you know, governmental regulations. I'll jump in here, Patrick, and I'll answer a question. It said, I would like to know if MBA course is offered in Thunder Bay or Aurelia. And so our MBA is offered through our Faculty of Business Administration. It is offered exclusively on our Thunder Bay campus. We have two program options. One is a 12-month program, and one is a 16-month program, which is an advanced studies in management. Uh, we've actually offered the 16-month program uh, as, a, as a new opportunity within the last few years because we recognize that students International students that are looking to gain work permits, so postgraduate work permits, are typically eligible for a three-year postgraduate work permit if they complete a 16-month program or longer. And so our undergraduate students are almost always smooth sailing, clear sailing to that three-year postgrad work permit. For our students completing masters that are only 12 months, you would anticipate on typically receiving a one-year postgraduate work permit. But if you do extend your program through an actual uh, through the, the official extension of having the advanced studies in management, for example, you would be most likely eligible for an up to a three year postgraduate work permit, which is exciting news because we know that gaining work experience within Canada as well as having that Canadian degree, both factor into being a really uh, great candidate for roles on an international scale too. So another one I'll chat about and then I'll pass it back to Patrick is, uh, the athletics facilities are open to st all students, correct? Um, so yes, all of our students on campus, whether you're undergraduate, graduate, uh, you would be eligible to access our athletic facilities, um, both on campus and off campus, whichever campus you're studying at. With that being said, built into your tuition fee structure is a nominal amount of fees that go towards the upkeep of those uh, facilities. 
And so you'll see that within your ancillary fees and your student fees to see the upkeep for those facilities. Uh, again, it's nominal though compared to what you would pay for a typical membership um, at a local gym, for example. And also there's additional programming that you can access for free, such as the recreational teams. We have dedicated full-time staff that help run those programs. And although you don't have to pay necessarily for a recreational team, we have to uh, still cover the cost of running those types of events and, and opportunities for you as a student. So Patrick, I'll pass back to you for a few more. For sure. So uh, uh, a quick question and then a more a longer question. Um, someone asked if we have scholarships for international students um, and how uh, and how we issue them. For undergraduate students, we have an automatically assessed merit-based uh, scholarship. So when you apply to any undergraduate program at Lakehead University, you will be considered for this academic merit-based scholarship. The value of that award is between $6,000 and $40,000, depending on your grades. So it can be uh, quite an amazing opportunity for the high academic achievers. Graduate studies funding is a little bit more nuanced, and I've encouraged you to check out the graduate studies page on our website, which has a great funding uh, sub page that talks about all the different ways that graduate students may be able to obtain funding. It is a little bit more nuanced and at the discretion of the faculty, so uh, I would encourage you to take a look at that. So Jordan, this is probably a good question to involve you in about the business program in Aurelia versus the business program in Thunder Bay, the differences in the majors, how co-op is built into some parts of the program and not other parts of the program. Um, and, and so there's a lot of questions here. But the first thing I really wanted to speak to is the quality. So both business pro, both campuses, are, we are the same university, our faculty are, and our educational standards are the same. And the business program itself regardless of which campus you take courses on, you are internationally accredited through the AACSB accreditation. So the quality of the education is the same. You are correct that at, in Thunder Bay, we do offer a few more majors in the business program. And the answer to that is actually quite simple. The Thunder Bay campus is the original Lakehead campus. Uh, it's, it's over 50 years old. The Aurelia campus, I believe, is now 13 years old. If, I, if my quick math is correct. So it's just a smaller campus. It's still growing, it grows every year. Um, and we're excited about it growing. But um, as you grow, you're able to offer more. So it's just that Thunder Bay is a bit more established. It is the larger of the two campuses. In terms of facilities on the two campuses, I think that uh, they are slightly different, but both offer the same core facilities in terms of residence on campus, the cafeteria on campus, as well as student events and programming, uh, both have dedicated teams to those, those things. One small difference is the athletic facilities in uh, Aurelia are located off campus and are through a third party provider, whereas the athletic facilities in Thunder Bay are right on campus. So, um, Jordan, do you wanna chat a little bit about when students pick their major and their specialization in the business program? Sure, I'd be happy to. So of course, this is in reference to an undergraduate student pursuing a business degree at Lakehead. Um, I am a proud graduate of our Honors Bachelor of Commerce program. So I did major in marketing with a minor in human resources and industrial relations management. It's a mouthful at last piece. Um, sometimes I just say I'm a minor in HR, but with that being said, uh, the, the question or the, the program structure of our undergraduate business program for HBCOM is that students after their first and second year where they've learned foundational courses are then able to pursue a major of their choosing. So as Patrick noted, there are certainly more options on our Thunder Bay campus, but that shouldn't dictate whether or not you select a really or Thunder Bay uh, right now, you should definitely consider what major you might be most interested in and then weigh that option. If that is the standout option and you know that maybe Thunder Bay is the only campus that offers a major that you're already passionate about, I certainly encourage you to select a campus based on that. But if that's not a huge concern for you, if you are more intrigued by the Honours Bachelor of Commerce program on a wider range, 
those first two years, I can tell you, are extremely foundational. So you get a wide range of course variety and course type. And so in your first and second year, you will get a taste of each and every major, essentially, and each and every area within the business world. And then from there, you can make a well-informed decision on what what program you would like to pursue. And so with that being said, after the second year, I recognized that I was very interested in both marketing, but also human resources. And so I was lucky enough to complete my minor by my third year and then focus my studies on marketing in my fourth year. When you get into third and fourth year classes within business, your class sizes shrink dramatically in size in terms of the number of students per professor. Many of my third and fourth year classes were in uh, rooms filled with 10 to 15 students and one professor, uh, similar to our ratio actually of what we're able to offer on either campus. But it just goes to show you that in that upper year level where it's really focusing on your passion and, and your area of study, you're gonna be able to connect with your peers more easily and your professors more easily for that support that you might need. I hope that answers the question. Um, uh, I, if you have any more questions about business, I would be happy to connect offline and chat more about it. Or of course, if, and this is to our, all of our audience members, if you're looking to connect with a current student at Lakehead University, you can actually use our Unibuddy chat service, which I will put in the chat in just a moment here. And you can chat with some of our current students here at Lakehead University. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so while you enter that into the chat, uh, just a couple of quick questions as we come up to our 10, our 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Thunder Bay time uh, window. Um, someone asked about uh, the length of the Honors Bachelors of Computer Science with co-op program. So the it's, a, it's an interesting question. The all Honors Bachelors programs are are four years of academic study, and then the co-op portion of them generally makes them five years of total time at Lakehead University. And then a similar program length question about the Masters of Education. It is, in fact, six terms uh, long, which is uh, generally two years. Now, the one caveat there is for thesis-based masters, they can run over depending on the length or, or how your thesis writing and uh, thesis defense process goes. So do keep that in mind. Awesome. And then... Um, I had another question about uh, from Amanda. It says, good morning. I'd like to know if the university assists international students with the visa process. And so I'm lucky enough to actually host on a regular basis the applying for your student visa live webinar session. So it's a part of the Lake and International Live series. We've done it for the past couple of months in a row and we'll have another session um, at the beginning of May. And this session is actually hosted consecutively with our international immigration advisor, Jennifer Hay. And so we walk through students through that application and we guide them and, and sort of giving them more details about what documents they need to have at the ready, how much to anticipate for cost, what the process looks like. Um, of course, Lakehead University can't do the application for you. You'll have to do it yourself or you might have to seek out an, an agent or a partner within your community to help you with that process. It is, in my opinion, and, and in many cases, it is a fairly straightforward process if you're reading the online forms and you're reading the uh, government's website in depth and in detail. Of course, with COVID, uh, there has been delays and we are experiencing longer processing times than uh, we would hope for. And so that's why we are recommending any students with a current offer to Lakehead University. Uh, we certainly encourage you to start the application process sooner than later. I always like to say that if you start the application now, even if you have an offer letter that is considered conditional, you're essentially putting yourself in the queue. And then once you're in the queue, once you receive that unconditional offer letter or that final offer letter from Lakehead University, you can use a web form on the website to upload that newest document and explain, uh, here, here is my newest offer letter from Lakehead University. They've waived all of my conditions. And so these are some of the questions that we go over in that session. And of course, having Jennifer with us 
uh, the International Immigration Advisor. She's there to answer questions. Typically that one is actually 30 minutes of presentation and 30 minutes of questions. And even in that 30 minutes of questions, we can't nearly get through it all. And so with that being said, I hope that you do register for one of our upcoming sessions. And Patrick, I know you mentioned that we were approaching that 10 o'clock timeline or deadline here. And so I'll move on to the next slide unless you had anything to add. Oh, I, there's two questions la left, Jordan, that kind of relate to the same topic about the postgraduate work permit. Um, and I, I think you've mentioned this, but I'll just reiterate it. The postgraduate work permit is given to any graduate of a Canadian university or college. It is up to three years. It depends on the length of your program. Generally, undergraduate students are given the full three-year work permit. It is at the discretion of the immigration officer reviewing your application. And I would encourage all of our students to either check out the Canadian government immigration webpage for full details or go on our YouTube page, which Jordan is about to plug and watch rewatch the webinar with him uh, and Jennifer and myself from two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I believe now that this uh, Jennifer, our immigration advisor here on campus goes into detail uh, in depth about the postgraduate work permit. Um, and with that, Jordan, I will pass it off to you to talk about our socials. Awesome, thanks Patrick. Um, and so on that final note, before we wrap up today's session, I wanna remind our audience to stay connected with us and follow us on our social media channels. You can find us at both uh, Lakehead International on both Facebook and Instagram. And as you've heard me say many times, you can find our YouTube channel, which is just Lakehead University. We have a few playlists for international students. One is just Lakehead International. You'll get an idea of international student experiences, hear from current students, hear about some of the opportunities they have, but also our Lakehead International Lives playlist where we have all of our webinars recorded and uploaded after the fact. And like Patrick mentioned, we've done plenty of sessions already this year uh, to help you in your transition, your journey to Lakehead University. We actually just recently hosted another session with Jennifer on Monday or Tuesday, April 6th, so just last week actually. And so it's quite updated and her answers of course are the most relevant to some of the most recent announcements out of immigration. Um, and so with that being said, for any of our sessions, please don't hesitate to head over to there. If you have questions, comment on the video and we'll be happy to address it after the fact. Last but not least, I wanna remind you to take a virtual campus tour. So we've talked a lot about our campuses today. We've talked a lot about Aurelia and Thunder Bay and all the things to do to get involved, but actually seeing our campus and seeing our facilities, our residents, the nature and beauty that surrounds either of our campuses. I think once you check out our virtual campus tour at lakehead.ca forward slash tours, you'll also be set on our, our institution. And so with that being said, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Patrick, for helping me co-host. Thank you to the audience for so many engaging questions. It was a really great session today. Um, and hopefully we'll see you at the next one. Of course, this Wednesday, we'll be doing a session with nursing. Um, and then following that, we also have psychology and research at Lakehead University. Alrighty, folks, bye for now and see you at the next one. Thank you for checking out today's video. If you have any questions, you can always comment below. Stay connected and follow us on our social media channels to stay informed about upcoming webinars and get an insider sneak peek of Lakehead University. See you next time.